bringing hope to many around the globe, transforming lives into legacies. Live in Word with Pastor Mensah Otterville. And now, today's word. There's a guy who's, whose TV uh, video has been going around. I think he came to Ghana some time ago. Born with no arms, no feet. He's a motivational speaker. And the great part is he has employed people. No arms, no feet. Why? Because he still has the operating system. He's blessed. If you stop criticizing the clay and start depending on the breath which is within you, the spirit, then no matter how the clay looks like, the operating system is blessed. God bless them. God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. You have that ability. It is not racial. It is not gender based. It is not social based. It is human. Whether you are black, you are white, you live in Ghana, you live in Afghanistan, you live in America, you have the same programming. The same. No human being has a higher programming and no one has a lower programming. Everybody has it. You may never use your program. It's like sometimes you go to some people, they bought a nice computer. You see it a lot of in the public sector, you know, big shots in the public sector. They requisition for a computer. And they get a computer. And they get a higher specs. But they don't know how to use it. So anytime you go to their office, you see screensaver. <laughs> screensaver. And it says that you know they don't use it. Some people even have rubber around the computer. They have a high spec computer, but they don't know how to use it. And some human beings are like that. They are blessed. They can be fruitful. They can multiply. They can replenish the earth. They can subdue the earth, but they never use it. Although the base program is there and the operating system is there. And when you understand that, then you know that when God blesses you, no one can violate your operating system. Nobody. God blesses you. Your family may be full of witches, but God blesses you. Your country may be poor, but God blesses you. You were born by a prostitute, but God blesses you blesses you because all those physical things you use to limit yourself doesn't concern God. What he's looking at is the spirit he put in you. It is that spirit that he has put the blessing on and he has put the four commands into. Then he said to man, so he said, be fruitful. Everybody said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue. Now, some people read that and they feel God says, have children, have more children, and fill the whole earth with children. (laughs) Now, do you think that was the most important thing in the mind of God? He says, have dominion, and the only thing he tells man is, have children. No, 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 no. He says something deeper and be fruitful. Everybody say, be fruitful. fruitful. Multiply. Multiply. Replenish. Subdue. Then if you read that passage, let's go back. Go back to Genesis chapter 1 and look at verse 28. It says, Then God blessed them, and God said to them, there are two different things. Two different things. The blessing is not what he said. The blessing is distinct from the commission. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful. And multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. In my Bible, there's a semicolon there. The next sentence says, have dominion. Have dominion. The first sentence says, be. 
after semicolon, have. Be is not what the same as have. Be is based on your nature. Have is based, it's a result of something you do. He didn't say be dominion. No. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish. Subdue. Then if you are able to do these four things, then you will have dominion. In other words, be fruitful. Multiplying. Replenishing, subduing is the process by which you have dominion. The intention is you must have dominion, but if you don't know how to be fruitful, you don't know how to multiply, you don't know how to replenish, you don't know how to subdue the earth, then you can never have dominion. So God tells him what to do and how to achieve dominion. So what is dominion? Oh, I love this. The word dominion, as it is used in Genesis chapter 1, 26, is from the Hebrew word rada. And carries the idea of contending with something that is wild and untamed. And bringing it under your control. The intention of dominion, therefore, is to have the authority and the ability to contend with and control untamed creation in order to make it serve useful purposes. So, did God know that man needed clothes? Yes, but he didn't create clothes for him. Did he know he would need a chair? Yes. Did he know that if man needed travel, Apart from just walking, he may need a faster means of traveling, like a car. Yes. Why didn't he give them to us? Because if he does it for you, then he is having dominion. The power of dominion delegated to us. So what the Bible says when it says dominion is that... See, the, the earth God created... Just use the power of your imagination. There was no building. Can you imagine an earth with no building? No road, no wall, no light, no microphone, no shoe, no clothes, no toothpaste, no toothbrush, nothing, nothing. Everything is wild. Nothing has been tamed. So God says, have dominion. It means you are going to take the natural raw materials you see and you are going to dominate them and use them in such a way that they serve your purpose. So if you need a chair, you don't ask God for a chair. You go to the wild tree there because within the wild tree there, there is a chair. God gave the man the ability to go to nature and pull out of nature everything he needed for himself. So that as we grew and we, we progress, we go back to nature, we pull out of nature, and nature serves our purpose. That is how you have dominion. But for you to do that, you have to learn to be fruitful. But you need to know how to go to nature and pull out what you want from nature and make it serve your purpose. That is how you have dominion. All right, final scripture and then we close. Psalm 8, verse 3 to 9. Psalm 8, verse 3 to 9. It says, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the sun, the moon, and the stars which you have ordained. Have you ever looked at that? I, I am a scientific buff, you know, uh, I, I have telescopes, look into the universe, galaxies, you know, study things, and I, I have documentaries on nature, and I just love all these things. And if you know how big the universe is, in the scheme of things, the earth is like a drop of, one drop of sand 
on the ocean compared to the created observable universe. Some of those figures that will blow your mind. Some things we see on earth when we watch the stars, some of the things, stars we are seeing, we are seeing them as they were 4,000 years ago because it takes that long for their light to get to us. Don't get too, it to, it will blow your mind. Now, the earth we say is big. In our solar system, the biggest is Jupiter. Our sun is so huge. There are other suns which are about a billion times bigger than our sun. And there are other suns that are a billion times bigger than the one which is a billion times bigger than us. And there are others which are a billion times bigger than the one which is a billion times bigger than the one which is a billion times bigger. You can't even work the zeros after that. When you consider all of that, Big elephant, rhino, giraffe, tall, whales, big animals. The psalmist asks the question, what is man? What is man that you are mindful of him? You look at all of these things. And then you come to the planet this man is on. is one tiny speck. And on that tiny speck, there are things there moving and look at what the psalmist says when i consider the heavens the work of your hands the sun the moon the stars which you have ordained what is man that you are mindful of him why do you think so well about man and the son of man that you visited him for you have made him a little lower than the angels now that's another theological thing there because the hebrew word translated angels here is the word Elohim that is the word that is usually used to describe God so it's not you've made him a little lower than the angels he has made him a little lower than Elohim than himself because man actually is higher than the angels according to the scripture we will judge angels and you cannot judge a being that is superior to you so God, man before angels. All right. You've made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, the paths of the paths of the sea. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth wow so you look at all these big things and he says we are the bosses we are the bosses of the sun the moon the stars that's why we go there we are no human being and it's i think you need to watch that one day you just see and they tell you what will happen in the next five years the next 50 years, the next 500 years. And by the time you get to the next 1,000 years, everything is gone back to bush. Nothing. Everything is back to where it was. Because what makes the difference on the earth is not the trees, it's not the animals. It is this man created in the image of God who is able to think like God, project like God, and function like God. Don't take yourself for granted don't ever diminish your value because you have been created with awesome power awesome power even the most illiterate the most uneducated illiterate ignorant primitive tribe in the jungle bush somewhere is far more sophisticated than any other thing God has ever created that's why the psalmist says, when I look at all of these things, what is man that you are mindful of him? Don't underestimate your value. Three things and I close. Number one, man is created to have dominion. It's very important. Man is created to have dominion. Number two, man does not have dominion over man. 
In all the things that God says about man's dominion, it never says and have dominion over one another. We dominate the earth, but we don't dominate fellow human beings. That's a whole lesson on governance there. And number three, man honors God when he, she exercises dominion. That's how we honor God. Next, I'm going to take the first command. Be fruitful. Because that is the parent command. You cannot multiply until you are fruitful. You cannot replenish until you've multiplied. You cannot subdue until you've replenished. It's a process. The first four laws God gave to man. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue. If you can do these things, you have dominion over the earth. You'll be a master wherever you go to. You will walk at the level God created you to be. Because you have discovered your original mandate. Created to have dominion. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to Living Word. To interact with Pastor Mensah Otebil, like his page on Facebook. Follow him on Twitter at Mensah Otebil. Email otebil at centralgospel.com or call plus 233-302-688-000.